Senator Sylvia Kasanga, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. You know, the period we saw you the last time, 2022 before election. Now, welcome to 2022 after election. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful. Um, uh, notwithstanding the turn of events, um, and if you'll allow me just to say, before we delve into our conversation, that it's very disconcerting that there is a section of powerful people in this country who seem to have decided that um, a certain grouping of Kenyans cannot lead this country. It is also very painful, actually, and I have to say this, because it seems, again, another group of, or the same group of powerful people are really keen not to have a country that is going to be strong on independent systems, that is going to fight corruption with genuineness, that is going to place the interests of Kenyans first and fight corruption, budgeted uh, corruption, state capture, you name them, all those put together. And a country that is led by rule of law. And it is really, really painful for a lot of Kenyans when we see this happen. Let me just say that. And I know it is not the conversation now, no, but I needed right. to get that out of my heart. Who are, you who are you referring to, Senator? I don't need to refer to anybody. But, but right now, the fact a that... Certain group. Yes, so because of the tampering of the election that we have seen now consistently, it is very unfortunate. Why can't we let our systems just, you know, work as independently as they're supposed to do? Why must there be tampering? Whether there was tampering or not is a question that the we have left for the courts to decide. But I mean, perception, we saw what happened. Definitely that would not have happened if there was no tampering or some games going on behind them. If, Senator, I have to ask this question, if your side of the political divide had been declared winners, would you have the same view? By the time, this one I can say with a lot of confidence that uh, you would not have seen drama around IBC for us to be declared. You would not have seen that drama. And you'll agree with me, even the way the leaders were all at Bomas. I was not there myself, but we we're all following. I was at KICC on that day. You can see there was the confidence that, you know, we expect IBC to just go ahead and do what they needed to do. But when we saw drama, then we knew something is cooking. Why must there be drama around elections every yeah, time? Why, why, why must members? people die? Why must, why must there always be something? When will we get to the point where we let our systems do their thing? Why did the Azimio members start the drama at Bomas? I think we'll agree that uh, since the investigation is going on and the DCI has taken the footage, we understand now he has the footage. Let's wait and see really what happened. Because that we can only say unless you are up there. We were not up there. We were watching from the cameras. Let's wait and see when the truth comes out. But, but I, it really is painful, yeah. honestly. But I can say that uh, in football, for example, and <clears throat> I agree with my sister here, uh, sister in a generic sense, um, that, uh, you know, in football, for example, when you see a foul being called, uh, it is a person who retaliates who usually gets called for the foul. Uh, it is not the original... Uh, Wrongdoer. The original foul uh, You <laughs> see, so, so I mean, uh, it's like, like, like uh, the senator said, uh, the investigations are ongoing, and uh, there's footage mm. uh, that we shall be able to see. Mm. Uh, we had no interest at all as a Zmeo in mm. disrupting that process. None. Mm. Okay, to the topic of the hour, Senator. Uh, all the three governors of Makueni County are for the first time wiper. All the three senators of Makwe of, of Ukambani are for the first time wiper. All the three women rep of Ukambani are for the first time wiper. Many of the elected members of uh, National Assembly wiper. Many of the elected MCAs wiper. Eh. 
I the, tell you. You're, you're <laughs> glowing like no. you can see me no, smile. Yeah, you. Yeah, like they have like wiped <laughs> the floor. Christmas <laughs> tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember having this conversation with you guys some yeah. time back, mm. and I could I remember <laughs> some of you were not convinced when I told you, wait and see what uh, Kalonzo is going to do. Mm. I can't remember when that conversation well, was. We did, we did have it. I was yeah. one of the dissenters. Yes, you, it showed in your eyes, by the yes, way, City. I asked. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. With political I processes, unfortunately, mm. given what we do here for a living, uh, it's not just our job to dissent. <laughs> it's our job to look at the terrain and what we've seen in the past. And we cannot agree simply because a politician such as yourself has made a pronouncement. No, no, no. Mm. Th that is not what we are going to take as the gospel. We will take it as what you have said. Fair so, enough. Now, with the proof enough. staring at us, mm. we the, will say, yes, you are absolutely now right. You are right. Sure, we yes. can see the end result. But then yes. we have to claw back and ask, yes. what did he do? Or what does he have then essentially that enabled this kind of result that we see to And to is it Kalonzo place? or the and party? And was it him? Well, alone. it's... um. First, let's start with the leadership of the party. So it is Kalonzo, because he rallies us together. Mm. And he holds a very strong vision for this country. And I hope you do realize it's not just an Ukambani leader. Waipa is a national party. Whereas our performance, of course, was good in uh, Ukambani, I hope you do realize that Waipa is a stronger party today because we have now candidates from Taita Taveta. We have candidates also from Wajir. And we have a women rep Indeed. in TC. You have, you have 20 members we have done of the very National well. Assembly. Absolutely. And mm. we are on a growth path. I said this to you guys last time. I said, watch WIPA. Just watch this space. Watch us in the next five years, how we are going to move. So we have a clear vision mm. of where we want this country to go. And our leader is the, ride, is the one riding that, that vision. And for a long time, Kalonzo has been underestimated and vilified. And the governors, the, the outgoing two governors, that is uh, Kivuda Kibwana and uh, Maendeleo Chap Chap uh, party leader, Dr. Alfred Mutua, and, Dr. Alfred Mutua, and also Charity Ngilo. You know, they, they try to fight uh, Kalonzo and Waipa in Ukambani region. I mean, that was a big battle for us, without a doubt, because they had the money. You see now the governors come in with money. But the people of Ukambani, they feel Kalonzo. This is what you must understand. They feel him. They Why understand they him, him. Because he's always been genuine. He's always wanted the best for them. And they understand that. He does not have the money to bring those projects, but he's constantly fighting for the betterment of our community. And they understand that. And they feel it. And when he's on the podium speaking to them, you know, when we speak our mother tongue, that's when you'll really understand that he speaks to them, to their hearts. Can I ask and you they this do question, understand Senator? Him. Yeah. Is it that the people of Okambani have determined that Kalonzo will be their leader, or is it Kalonzo who has done absolutely well for the people of Okambani so that they have decided that he is the leader? It is both. He has done well for them. You know, then I have to ask how he has done well for them. You see, um, for a long time, we always base um, development with physical, you know, that is the roads. Has he brought a road? Has he brought water and everything? And mm. whereas, yes, Kalonzo has done it on a national level. By the way, we have a lot of national projects that he has been pushing, even when he's not in government. And that is no doubt. Yeah. All the big national projects that are happening in our region are courtesy of Kalonzo Musioka, pushing for them constantly. Mm. Those are some of the things we were doing while we are, you know, serving in the, like I was serving in the 12th parliament as a nominated senator. My work is to follow up on, on those projects from the various departments, the water projects, you know, the road projects. Mm. And this is what people don't sometimes don't understand, that it is actually Kalonzo working. So if you expect that it is him who will come to build the road, then you're missing the point, because how can he do it when he's not in government? But out of his influence and out of the positions that he has, you know, facilitated for some of us, we make it happen. So he has been serving the people consistently. So, right. so it appears uh, that Kalonzo has wiped the floor. In Ogambani. <laughs> in Ogambani. But the question is, but the question is this: always, when you hear that expression, mm. wiping the floor, you know you don't wipe the floor with nothing. Yeah? You wipe the floor with somebody or mm. something. Mm. So who did he wipe the floor with? Mm. Uh, who's the broom? Uh, who is? <laughs> <laughs> or who's the mop? Or who has, yeah, who's who, the mop? Or who has been mopped? Mm. Uh, yeah, you, you wipe. Know. You wipe because there's dirt on the floor. Exactly, mm. exactly correct. So, so, but, uh, but let me just say this. Um, you know, it, it's of, of obviously, obviously clear that uh, you know, Mr. Musioka did do very well uh, with his political party, 
And it's also true that the governors did not do well. That's also a fact. Mm. Uh, but let's not, let us not forget that all three of them, uh, you know, uh, uh, minus Mr. Mutua, or Dr. Mutua, I should say, mm. were part of Azimio. Mm. Although Mr. Mutua is still, Dr. Mutua is still a part of Azimio. He does not know it. <laughs> But, oh right! But, but, but he's, a, he's a still closeted has a couple member. Of, no, no, he still no, has no. a couple of days. No, Lee, Chap Chap is a bona fide member of Azimio. It's part of the twenty-six political parties that constitute Azimio. Um, the, he never exited uh, the agreement. Uh, that's a very laborious process, uh, and the earliest he can exit would be November. Uh, he's a member of Azimio. So if if Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mutua has a member. In Parliament, I don't know that he does. Yes, not he does. There is a, a that is an Azimio, that's an yeah, Azimio member, mm -hmm. whether whether they like <laughs> it or not. And but but, but let me just say, let me, let me just say, <laughs> let me just say this secondarily uh, that uh, all these uh, individuals, um, you know, um, Madam Gilu, uh, Professor Kibana, and so on, all of them were in Azimio, and they supported us. Uh, of course, um, um, uh, Mr. Musioka was a senior Azimio leader in that region. And he also mobilized our people uh, mm. to vote for Azimio. Um, you know, so it, it's, a, it's a wonderful showing for us. I think there are you know, great things ahead for Mr. Musioka. I've said before, by the way, uh, although Eric is looking at me sideways, <laughs> or, 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 with a side, or with a side eye rather, <laughs> that Mr. Musioka is one of the senior politicians in this country, among the top four uh, leaders in this country. Uh, you know, that's a fact. Mm. Um, but I would like to say that, uh, and, I, and I think this is coming uh, in this country, that the era of kingship, king, kingpins, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is going to end very soon. Uh, you've seen, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Mr. M Mr. Odinga, for example, is no longer a leader of Luonyanza as such. He's a national leader. He's uh, outstripped. Uh, you know, his, his uh, sort of um, ancestry uh, to become a leader of the country. And that's what we wish for everyone. Uh, you know, we, Mr. Musioka is developing those tentacles as the senator has um, expressed. Now he has members. Has he not developed already? What? Those tentacles. No, Wiper is a national party. Um, a uh, 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 wiper has had candidates not only in Ukambani but no, 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 no. He, he has, mm. but I'm saying he's consolidating them and extending okay. them. Okay, I'm not saying he has not, mm. you know. And personally, I look forward to the day when we don't talk about you know uh, leaders uh, in this country mm. being pegged or hooked to their ethnic origins, that they are national leaders. Uh, that is when you know we transform ourselves from being. Um, um, you know, an ethnic group mm. to being uh, Kenyans, which is one of the biggest problems that I think we have. And I think the senator was adverting to that when she said that there are particular people in this country who don't want this to happen. They think that the presidency is a birthright of a very few communities and so on. Um, and then you wonder what <coughs> some communities will have to do uh, to, to, to vote to the top leadership. Mm. Uh, I think that is a challenge of nation building mm. uh, that I've heard uh, CT talk about before here, where we transition from being uh, our, in our own ethnic cocoons into Kenyans, into Africans, and finally into black people. Mm. Because, you know, we have a certain commonality, uh, uh, you know, on, on the global stage as black people. How do you juxtapose that, what you're saying, Prof, in terms of people being regional or tribal kingpins mm -hmm. perception wise in mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. versus people politicians having a base as a politician you want to have you'll you'll definitely have a base a base where mm -hmm. a majority of people in this region mm -hmm. um, support you as compared to other regions mm -hmm. now Kenyans vote on tribal lines or Kenyans, you know, mm. coalesce on tribal lines. You've even said it here yourself. Mm. But so how do you how do you play those two? Yeah, I mean a leader having a solid base but also having a national outlook yeah. and them not being referred to as the leader of this community. Yeah, I think ethnic primordialism, uh, you know, or communal primordialism is a very real disease uh, in 
in sort of plural societies like ours, where we have uh, some 40 odd communities. Uh, if you remember, uh, Eric, at the dawn of independence, mm. there were several leaders there who voted to the top as national leaders. Surprisingly, Mr. Kenyatta was one of those. He was beloved across the political spectrum mm. and across ethnic communities. Mr. Tom Boyer was another of those people. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Oginga Odinga was another, you know. Even individuals like uh, Pio Gamapinto, you, you know, did not really have that kind of tag or taint of being uh, an ethnic, uh, you know, leader. If you look at across the, the south of us here in Tanzania, uh, I challenge you to tell me what ethnic group uh, Julius Nyerere was. You, you will not be able to say it. Mm. Uh, even Magufuli, who came lately, uh, the late Magufuli, many Kenyans don't know what ethnic group he was. Kikwete, most people do not know what group he was. Um, um, Benjamin Kappa and others. Tanzania has traveled this road much faster and much further than, than, than we, we have. Uh, our politicians, I think, have held us hostage and beaten us into sacks or potatoes, in, into ethnic cocoons, what you call tribal cocoons. I don't mm. like the word tribe because uh, uh, tribes apparently only exist in Africa, not in Europe. Mm. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, but, but these, these, these national communities, I don't call them national community or mm. subnational communities, if you want to say, you know, our leaders did not push that project of nation building, uh, you know, f uh, fast enough. I think Mr. Kenyatta had the opportunity to do it, but he did not. I think he retrogressed uh, somewhat. Uh, you know, he was a great Pan-Africanist, as you all remember. He, you know, he was a member of the first Pan-Africanist Congress in Manchester in 1945, you know, with others like uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, and those great men, uh, black men of the planet. You know, but when he came to Kenya, he regressed, mm -hmm. you know. And one of the things that I've always liked about uh, my candidate, Mr. Odinga, is that he has always projected this national image. Uh, and if you looked at his campaign, the campaign was national in nature. Uh, he did not have, um, and, and there were no lesser individuals in that campaign. Um, and and this, is, this has been his life, building one Kenya, one nation. And I hope that is where we go going forward. You know, the, what we consider the tribal cocoons, something that you clearly do not like saying, the construct of it and why it is it has should we say, acquired the negative tinge that it has is not because the tribes in and of themselves are anything negative. It's just a descriptive form of a group of people. Yeah. And it has always been. Now, whether you call, let's say, bankers, it's a tribe of bankers if you want to call them that. If you want to look at educators, it's a tribe. Now, in the West, they have, they most definitely are tribal even in their uh, political configurations. If you look at the history of these so-called parties and how it is people galvanize around them, believe me, it was not just ethnic lines, but there was a commonality. Now, what am I saying? I am saying that sometimes when we look at our own political configuration, we are our best worst enemies in that. We agree with what the Western world classifies us as instead of distinctly being proud of what we are and how it is we go about our business. You've correctly said that we have over time learned to coalesce. Yes, somebody may be a leader in one region, but they will work with other people. But why it is easy is if you look at this country, members of the Kenyan community live everywhere and anywhere. Others who are more numerous live perhaps elsewhere and everywhere more than others, but they do. So even when we talk about our political parties and the affiliations, it's a preference that one can assume. Talk about the UK. They have a Labour Party. Where is the strength of the Labour Party? In places where there was industrialization and there were workers. Look at the formation of what we call the, 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 the Whig Party. I'm saying this because I find absolutely nothing wrong with somebody being a leader of a community in a place. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is a good thing. The point that we should arrive at is that person having been a leader 
it means that there are certain aspirations that community have that this person represents. That's why the person continues being a leader. Mm. And in our setup, it is very difficult for you to be considered and accepted as a leader elsewhere if your own community doesn't consider you to be a leader. Absolutely. Because you come from somewhere. Yes. Absolutely. In fact, yes. I, I really want to agree with you on yes. that. There's nothing wrong with being a leader of your community. And as we become more politically aware as a nation, and we are seeing that now happening, if you don't perform for the people, they get rid of you. So if they consistently, you know, choose you as their leader, it means you're doing something right, something they appreciate. They feel that their needs are represented by, by you know, by that particular leader. And I think, um, just to comment on what Professor was saying, whereas, you know, Kenyans are waking up to the idea of the nationalism of leadership, I still think we have a bit of way to go. We have a bit of way to go. We will still need the base. Any leader will still need to have his base strong mm. enough before he can now reach out to the rest of the country to seek, uh, to seek leadership. Mm -hmm. And that we are going to see, I think, for the next two or three elections before we get over that. And then something also we've discussed here, or probably in another platform, you know, the fact that our boundaries, our, our county boundaries were placed around our tribes, which I think is something that should have been thought through at the time of placing the boundaries, mm. such that you will find you know, largely the community of the area is the one that takes leadership, including even in the county assembly. Until the day we will have the county assemblies mixed up, or you'll have a governor who comes from Kisi and can lead in Ukambani, we still have some way to go. We yeah. still have to rely on, you know, our strong, strong bases. I Let think me just so say more. this, um, uh, you know, you know these counties largely track the 42 colonial districts. Yes, that were there at at independence. Mm -hmm. So they are uh, they are basically uh, remnants, mm -hmm. if you will, residues of the colonial period, uh, which have sort of calcified uh, ethnic consciousness mm -hmm. in this country and prevented the development of a national consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just say that the guiding principle of the 2010 Constitution, and uh, which is premised on liberal theory uh, itself is that individuals uh, are granted rights as persons, not as members of, of an ethnic group uh, in that sense. Uh, the, the constitution, our constitution does not envisage that we are organized as members of ethnic groups. It envisages that we are individuals with free will to govern ourselves and to make decisions in that sense. Mm -hmm. That is a, really the magic of, of liberalism, if you, if you take it at a higher level. Uh, and the march of that project of democracy mm -hmm. is to shear us or to shear off, um, you, know, <clears throat> you know, toxic identi identities. And I'm not saying that uh, ethnicity is a toxic identity per se, but I'm saying that politicians mm -hmm. toxify ethnicity mm -hmm. and use us uh, as common people uh, to fight each other, to, to, you know, to, to tell us I'm going to bargain for you for the national cake, when mm. in fact they are bargaining for themselves. For themselves. This mm. process is not organic. Uh, and so if you know how corrupt our society is, no one is... Uh, uh, ethnic kingpins in this country are uh, really uh, creatures that uh, ought to be questioned seriously. Take a well. break. Let's take a break. Okay. 27 minutes to 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you'll come back with a well. That's where we'll start from. Yeah, she's, she's. <laughs> Let's take a break first and take a look at the weather and traffic. Senator Sylvia Kasanga and Professor Makao Mutua are here with us. We are talking about the rise and rise of Kalonzo Musioka and also looking at, all right, Wiper has many, has governors, has senators, has women rep, has members of the National Assembly, 20 members of the National Assembly. A, that's a good thing. Is it and Actually, they're 23. Yeah. 23. 23. Yeah, they're 23. Um, um, uh, yes, I yeah. was just looking at uh, the those elected directly as Wipe Democratic 20, and then from the w women reps, yes. four. They're yes, 23. They're four I'm sticking up for mm. Wiper. Yeah. 23. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're looking at the bigger picture. How many does Azimio have? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. We said, uh, Senator, that you will begin from the point. Well, <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, Professor, 
here has no choice but to, you know, speak for Wiper whenever he can because Wiper performed very well yeah, as a big partner of, of Azimio. In fact, there's a meme that shows Kalonzo <coughs> carrying Wiper on his shoulders. I mean, carrying Azimio on his shoulders. <laughs> and it, it's a very good picture, you know. <laughs> I would not argue with that. Why it's would, a good picture. Why would that and be called so? I mean, it's not like Wiper has the majority of the contributions into the Azimio uh, uh, port. The only the majority would be ODM, 70 members of the constituency, like uh, single member con Denise, and then 10 women rep. It's because, um, it's because, compared to? yeah, it's because there was the fact that a lot of people underestimated uh, uh -huh. Kalonzo's capacity and what he can bring. And in fact, just to, to say something that uh, Professor had talked about just a little earlier, if you remember how vilified Kalonzo was, especially by the governors, just before he had joined, or that we had officially joined Azimio. And there was talks of Kalonzo has been given money. Mm. I think the, the figure was three billion, mm. you know, and things like that. I mean, all sorts of things were said about Kalonzo to make him look, you know, so to belittle him. It wasn't three billion. <laughs> Lati, you have to be very careful right now with the, with the things you say on national because who has proved that? And if at all, the so community. It's an allegation. It was an allegation. Mm. And, you know, they, they try to make it look like Kalonzo goes out there, you know, to just fight for his own personal interest. Something he was saying mm. about these so called kingpin leaders who just go for their own personal interest. Mm. But what has happened today is we've debunked that entire myth. And it is clear the people of Kambani and Kambas, wherever they are, believe that and know. I told you they feel Kalonzo. They know he's fighting for their community and not for himself. Mm. And if at all he was fighting for himself, you'd see him different. You'd see different fortunes. You'd, mm. see, you'd be asking, where did those, say, choppers come from and mm. things like that. You've never seen uh, Kalonzo do that. And you see, this is the reason why when you underestimate people, Although let me not even go into that. Mm -hmm. We are just happy with the performance of Kalonzo. And something else that Kenyans need to know. You know, he's a, he's a global leader because he's been the one who goes, you know, around uh, mediating, you mm. know, all that. Yeah. And you know, that plays also into the local setting. Kalonzo is a serious mediator. Mm. And because of that, he's been able to retain a lot of relationships, keep the party together. So we don't see fallouts and things like that that affect the performance of the party in the long run. And he's been able to contain, even in this heated, you know, election. Mm. You saw how he handled uh, uh, Wavinia Ndeti mm. and, and um, the MP4 for, for Mavoko, yep. Macau, yep. Mwishimwa Macau. You saw that. It was heavily contested. He, mm. was, able, he was able to balance it out. And, and many others. We did that a lot in the region right. to maintain and keep the party together so that we can continue growing growing the party i mean of course the way you in which you talk about this i mean uh, given how does this feed then into the national conversation uh, because in as much as we understand that it's absolutely necessary for you to have you know your background support i mean they say uh, if you if you can't sort things out in the kitchen don't even come out into the courtyard because what are you doing right but how does this then feed into the national conversation uh, where we're saying, because you've done so well in representation of your people at home, does it then translate to then you being able to do this on a national level? Absolutely. Actually, the same strengths you're seeing being carried through at the local level are the same ones that will be carried on a national level. And like I said, let's, you know, watch this space. 2027, watch the space. Kalonzo is coming, Wiper is growing. We shall be using the same, you know, strengths as we continue growing the party, as we continue getting membership across the country and fielding more candidates across the country, a lot more than we, do, we did this year. We, we fielded quite a number this year. Find they lost. A lot of it is because, again, you know, we have the sibling rivalry within, within Azimio that, you know, has cost us in several pockets. But we are still able to emerge in some of the pockets. But going forward, we are growing stronger. And these negotiations are happening mm. and will continue happening even at the national level you know, at the national platform. And, you know, I, I like to remind Kenyans that uh, Kalonzo is one of the most inclusive leaders that you will get. And this is something that will play out at a national level. Even when you see the composition of our party, our party is not an Ukambani party. It's a national party. Mm -hmm. Our secretary general is from Lamu. She got the first nominee slot for Senate. She's going into Senate. You see, that is the kind of national outlook that Kalonzo has all the time. And he pushes for it and insists on it 
even at the party level. So we're just expanding ourselves now right. Yeah, so as we go forward. Are we then feeding into this long age narrative of the political party then coalescing around an individual as opposed to issues? No, it's still about issues. Yes, I know we still have the individual, yes, because the vision bearer and all that. But even the way we have formed the party, you can see it's a party that is here to stay beyond any individual. We have a new constitution as a party. I think I mentioned this before. We have a new constitution that believes very largely on social democracy. And each of our leaders taps into that as they go out into their leadership spheres, you see. So we are building a national party. It is a national party. And it will be built beyond an individual. In as much as right now, the vision bearer, like any institution, you need a vision bearer mm. first, and then you have the structures then that can live beyond. So, if so that is the same there, thing. What we are seeing right now, if Kalonzo was not there, would we see the same buildup of structures for the party? Or is it then heavily dependent on the character of Kalonzo Musioka? You know, it's, it's not easy to say if he was not there because he's there. <laughs> he's there right now <laughs> so i don't know i don't know if i can envision because if him we're not saying it there, was really then built on issues it is then built it on wouldn't issues. matter who the person at the top was beyond now delivering the vision on those I issues mean, I should, I mean, I, i'm just in terms of longevity mm -hmm. you know because if we're talking about a national party then should be able to live out yeah. and uh, that's just really where i am now in terms of okay i mean i mean everything that you say and it is fantastic to hear that looking at a party that, you know, was is basically built from the ground. Mm -hmm. But then we say in terms of longevity, will it go beyond the individual? That a child who is in primary school today can join this party in the future and say, I'm going to be able to come and fill in. Yeah, it's about yeah. strong structures. Mm -hmm. You see, strong structures. The same thing we keep saying about our country. It is the structures that keep an institution running right. beyond an individual. Mm. And at any one time, the individual at the top has the duty to make sure the systems and, you know, all the cogs mm. are turning at the time when they are there. Yeah, I mean, so, I, think, I think that, um, um, you know, if, the, you know, we are talking about what is mm. and we should also talk about what ought to be. To be. Um, you know, I mean, CT... Uh, you know, m momentarily here bought the idea of a king kingpin, but I, <laughs> I want to disabuse him of this idea. <laughs> uh, that if you look, you know, our democracy is a fledgling one. It's a young democracy. We still live in a largely illiberal state, uh, not fully liberal, illiberal state, uh, which means that our people and our leaders have not internalized the tenets of democracy. You know, fascism still runs deep in a society. Uh, this ethnic bigotry is with us uh, to the bone marrow. Uh, these cabals form around uh, ethnic groups and so on and ethnic leaders. At some point, we ought to be able to start to separate leadership from uh, their ethnic communities. That's when we would know that our democracy is maturing. Um, you know, in advanced democracies, for example, you don't see people holding onto their communities. Uh, the way, the one exception was, of course, uh, Trump holding onto white people explicitly as his group to propel him into office. And professor. And let me finish. <laughs> let me just finish. Let me just, let me just finish this point uh, because I know what you want to say. <laughs> I know what you want to say. But, you know, I'm just saying that this, this appeal to an ethnic group directly and without shame is not something that you see in, in liberal societies. You, you see, it might, there may be coded language and so on and so forth. Um, uh, you know, and, and when you pass from office, let us say, for example, uh, Clinton passes from office or Obama passes from office, you know, he still does not, cannot control what that community is going to do. It's very difficult to do it. In this country, whether you are in office or out of office, you, uh, for lack of a better word, you colonize your community and you hold them hostage. And I think, I think what, uh, and I said, I, you know, I think you would agree with me, what we would like to be, okay, it's okay to have that base, all right? But at least be, to be, to, to go beyond that base, you know, what, uh, to, to do what, to be what we ought to be, not what we are, you know, to dream of a higher planet, of a higher summit for ourselves as a people, to engage in a conversation about, you know, a superior intelligence about national politics, which, 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 which does not moor us 
just to the community mm. that, that we come from. It, it moves us into the nation of Kenya because, you know, we were not created uh, as one country, you know, by the British. You know, we were beaten together, uh, you know, uh, in, in, into, into, into this thing called Kenya. Mm. And so we must struggle to make it a country and a nation and the state that works for us. You know, before Garibaldi came into being and did what he did to unify Italy, mm -hmm. it was a smattering and a scattering of small, small states. True. If Otto von Bismarck, and the story goes on. If you look at and listen to what you're saying, you're saying the strong leadership that we see in communities where they stand out and they clearly are the leading lights of whatever movement or party that they have should then be subject to a committee. Because if you look at political parties in the West, those parties have owners. The presidential candidate is someone they feel they ought to push up the ladder so that they can lead and become whoever they are. But the structure of the party has a leadership. The structure of those parties have people who actually call the shots. And it is known, and that is what they do. So, it isn't as though we're that different. It's just that we are at that phase where we are still enjoying the process of having an understanding of how leadership works. It's a process. And if I'm to go by the example of the West, we've moved very swiftly. Yeah. Really, really swiftly. You're making lips. I think you're being polite. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, I think you're being polite. I, th I think that, um, you know, um, the aspirations of, the, of our constitution uh, seeks to create a Kenyan. That is the basic aspiration of that document, is to create a Kenyan. Uh, one who is driven by values uh, and interests uh, and principles, uh, not fundamentally by their ethnicity. To, to me, I regard ethnicity, uh, the way it is used in Kenyan politics, as a malignant force, as a totally malignant force. I mean, that's why we went to war in uh, uh, 2007. You know, you know, that's why, I mean, uh, Senator Yeh was talking about certain people deciding that others should not lead and others feeling that it's their birthright. I talked here before last time I was here about a communi communities of entitlement mm -hmm. and incumbency who feel that they must lead and others must be led in this country. And you know what I'm talking about. And that is what we want to vanquish. I would say that. Um, and this is why we actually think that, you know, one of the benefits uh, of a Raila presidency will be to the demyst demystification of this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this diarching uh, of two groups, uh, uh, sort of husbanding, if you will, the presidency for the, since independence. It will be great. And will open the door for others, like, uh, like Mr. Musioka and others, to come into the presidency. That is why this election means so much to all of us as a country, so that we can mature as a country. See what they did in South Africa? You know, after Mbeki and, uh, and Mandela, uh, who are Corsas, you have not seen another Corsa, you know, take the baton. You've seen others come into the picture to complete the national project. You've seen in Tanzania, which I talked about earlier. You don't see people coming from the same group time and again, time and again. Because that is not how you build an African nation. For I'm glad you mentioned Tanzania mm -hmm. because their model is very much like a Western model. Mm -hmm. If I leave the Chinese Communist Party aside. Mm -hmm. But they have a hierarchy. They have a system. They even have institutions that build up leaders. So you more or less have an idea of who's going to be the leader next. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a cartel. <laughs> what the leadership? The leadership? Yes, yeah, yeah. it's a cartel because <laughs> the, the, the moment. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got company there. I've got company with you there. <laughs> I think if I'm just to if I'm just to add on to what Professor is saying, you know, to agree with him to a good extent, is that uh, our politics, you know, there's been the conversation about exclusion, the feeling excluded. They're feeling excluded from sharing of the national cake, you know, for instance. And that we really need to relook at our leadership model, our governance model, so that no one feels excluded. Mm. Was it yesterday you were talking about a parliamentary system? Mm. Mm. Was it yesterday? I don't know. It was, I had, it was yesterday. And I said, that is what this country really, really needs. 
you know, let you know, let uh, the leader of government be chosen from from parliament for mm. once. Let us not be the ones to go to the ballot for mm. that. Let it be decided there in parliament. Let the post-election coalitions, you know, happen there as they try to 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 muzzle out and and fight. We've given them the mandate anyway. Let them go and sort it out there. And in the process of that, you find a better sharing of you know national cake, national goodies, rather than having to rely on one individual. You know, which is what we have seen uh, since independence. And until the time we are going to resolve some of these issues, the question of even that national, the, the kind of, you know, country that we envision and that we want, which is a country where a Kenyan is a Kenyan beyond, you know, their tribe, is not going to happen until that inclusion bit of it mm. has been felt by everybody. Sure. But are we looking at processes that are not going to be comfortable? Uh, to get to the to the desired end, and if we're going to make them, uh, if we're going to make the comparison to countries who are there today, they went through some really back-breaking, difficult situations to get there. There was blood that was shed, there was revolt that was happening before they got to the point where they said one of two things: never again will we go back there, and these are the things that we need to do in order to get there. And there was a collective agreement when it came across board. Said, look, okay, we've been through the rigors and the ringers, and we've seen, okay, this we cannot do again this we cannot do again but then many would argue that until you get through until you get through that grinding and gnashing of teeth then you may not get to that point and i think it's important to have those conversations and to say can we get to the point whereby we have an agreement as to what can never happen again there are things that we can accept and say moving forward, governance should be in this manner. But then getting to the, to the point across board collectively and say, these things we have consensus can never happen again. It doesn't matter what corner of the country you're from. Yeah, you can know, we not get to that point? Yeah, you know, there's this notion of, uh, I don't know whether I've talked about this before on this show, there's this notion of state and national irreversibility, whereby you develop, you cohere into a nation mm. and you develop a national consciousness a kind of a zeitgeist right that says that i am a kenyan first and at first i'm a kenyan yep and then i'm everything else second i'm a woman i'm a man i am a kikuyu i'm a kamba i'm whatever else i am i live in central i live wherever that is the point of reversibility and i think what you are saying is is, uh, is very apt if you look at countries that have reached that level of irre irreversibility where the state cannot simply be unraveled mm. and, and dismantled. They have gone through some traumatic things. The United States, for example, was civil war. Mm. Yeah. That really bonded them. South Africa, I would like to say, it's a long struggle against apartheid that uh, created this, this, this national thing that they are going through. It's a project, I agree. Mm. But they are further along even than we are. For Tanzania, it was really uh, the, 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 the brain power of one man. You know, people say, you know, individuals cannot make history. They can. They do. Mm -hmm. You know, Nyerere actually single-handedly wheeled that country into what it is today, into a nation of people. Uh, so that we, if you go to Tanzania, for example, you know, I lived there, and I think I said this before here. I was there for three years in exile. Never once was I asked what my tribe was. As long as you spoke in Swahili, people would assume that you are just one of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so that is very important. And I like to think of that country as really uh, the country to the south of us as a model. I know, I know Kenyans don't like to think that there are other models, but that one is a model for us. Yeah, there's something to learn from other people. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with looking out there to see where we should then go. You know, so absolutely. I think we, we are on that journey that Ndu you're talking about. Mm. Yeah, a journey where we say some things never again. After 2007, there have been some things never again. With the conversations about what makes us uh, fight, what is it that cannot be said by a public leader, we are saying never again. With the conversations about corruption and what, how we define corruption, we, I think we're in that phase now. What is corruption? What can we say never again? And also, to, not to cut your tongue, yeah. but the attempt that the Building Bridges Please Initiative had is <laughs> a I phrase to, to try and cut into somebody's <laughs> conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, the, what the Building Bridges Initiative was attempting to do is some of the things we are talking about here. Mm. Whereas, you know, yes, it was stopped by the courts and everyone else. The fact does remain there is an attempt that we are trying to get this country to where we feel it needs to be. So that we don't have these questions of 
not being included and we can move towards a country where everyone is a Kenyan first. So again, I hope these conversations don't die out. It, it looks like we have to continue fighting. We still need those leaders who will put themselves out there, bring out these ideas and fight for them. Yeah, and follow due process. And follow due process, absolutely. <laughs> the rule of law must <laughs> prevail. <laughs> Prof, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I think the Supreme Court pronounced itself for yeah. BBI. Uh, we are obedient citizens of this country. We will follow the law mm. and what the court says. The next time it is done, it will be done according to the black letter of the law. Very good. We want to thank you very much for joining us this uh, morning. Before you Final comment. Mm. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> I think I, I want more time. Hopefully there's a conversation we've not had. Mm. There's a mental health conversation you yes. need to have. Mm. We need to have that because, you know, you've had several and I appreciate uh, what you've had. But uh, nobody has spoken about the 12th parliament having given Kenyans an act of parliament to do with mental health, a legislative framework in which mental health can be discussed. So I need us to have that conversation. And secondly, can, uh -huh. I have brought you guys a book so that we can start internalizing this leader. Of hey, ours who has against done all odds. very well. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Against all odds. With Kalibatemi. Absolutely. I think Kenyans, we need to interact with the, the history of Kalonzo Musioka so that you can understand him deeper, mm. so that we stop undermining him or mm. underestimating Give him. This month and watch out <laughs> that <laughs> he's your, he's your no, next no, no, no. big thing. I'm talking about the mental health. I, okay. I, I like that very we'll much. We'll talk about it. Time is up. Thank you very much for joining us. Senator Sylvia Kasanga and Professor Makao Mutua. Have a lovely day, folks. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.